Well, good evening, everyone. I hope you are all doing well as you uh, hopefully shelter in place. Uh, I know here in Orange County, where our church is in Florida, uh, we are under uh, basically stay home uh, advisory uh, from the county mayor. And so I'm very blessed to be able to come here, even under that advisory, uh, to uh, officiate uh, and, and to talk with you um, as a leader of worship. Uh, and I want to say, uh, for those of you who are out there, um, thank you for uh, joining us on these live streams. It's actually been very good for me and for my heart to be able to offer them. Uh, and so without further ado, I want to talk to you about uh, the Annunciation. Today is the Annunciation. It's the Feast of the Annunciation in the prayer book calendar. Uh, one of the fun things about the date itself, uh, that uh, it's March 25th. Um, if you do the math, that's nine months before uh, Christmas Day, which is December 25th. And a lot of people don't really realize that, but uh, here we are, uh, one of those biological necessities coming right at us. Uh, so before we begin evening prayer, I just want to offer this meditation. Um, my dear wife, Rebecca, was uh, uh, some months ago kind of talking about wanting to start a, some YouTube com uh, commentary, some, some content on YouTube, sort of half joking. Uh, and, um, you know, it's not the greatest reason to become a, uh, a content provider on the Internet, but here we are. Uh, and Father Matt, who I was with yesterday, he joked that, uh, you know, in as much as everybody is uh, becoming a YouTuber now, uh, really, we are uh, becoming all anchorites now, all uh, praying in our closets, sort of, do, uh, night and day. That's a sort of dark joke, Father Matt, but he's not exactly wrong either. All of us, in fact, are bound to our limited space and locale. This is difficult, I think painful, uh, even if we know it is for this moment, for the safety and well-being of our neighbors, and for our entire community. We know that it's good, but we don't love being locked inside. And so what do we do with this time? What can we learn, therefore, a, a through the witness of Mary on this day of the Annunciation, even as we're stuck because of COVID-19. As I was reflecting on Mary uh, and, and, uh, and, and her story in the beginning part of Luke's gospel, and then of course Jesus in the beginning of his ministry and his life, I reflected on at least three things that we can take with us in this time of sheltering in place. Uh, we'll start actually tonight uh, in this reflection by reading from the gospel according to Luke as we read the gorgeous story of the Annunciation. Uh, if you have your Bible out, or if you have a Bible with you or close, you can read along. It's uh, Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named da Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your kinswoman Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. It's one of the most gorgeous and well-known stories of scripture and a story of uh, this, incredible, uh, this incredible obedience, this incredible uh, innocence coming into, uh, what do we want to say, 
uh, into parlance, into true communion with the angel of God. In those words, uh, oftentimes rendered as, be it unto me according to thy word. What does it mean to be it unto me, to you, to the, uh, to, according to the word of God in the age of COVID? What does it mean? I think it means right now to allow God's spirit to rest on our hearts, to bring us peace, to bring us calm, to be agents in as much as we can of God's salvation, even in small, tiny ways, I think, especially as we hunker down, right? But before we can take any actions that begin to reflect God's greatness and glory, like we talked about on Sunday, let's first say, be it unto me. God, be with me. Allow the Holy Spirit in his comfort, grace, and love to rest deeply on our hearts, especially in this great time of tumult. Later, of course, in the story, Mary would visit uh, her kinsman, Elizabeth, uh, and then when baby John the Baptist and baby Jesus met in utero, uh, there was quite the commotion in the womb and the wombs. Um, this is, of course, at the end of, uh, in the beginning of chapter two of St. Luke's Gospel, actually still in chapter one, excuse me. Um, and uh, Elizabeth exclaims to Mary, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit Jesus. She knows what's going on in there. And Mary responds with the Magnificat, which we'll say in just a few minutes in evening prayer. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and so on. This gorgeous poem, uh, this amazing song of Mary. And what I think she's doing is really interesting here, too. Not only like a really great song and a great poem that we should remember for all time and all places, right? But in this, sto- in this poem, Mary locates herself in the unfolding story of the people of God. I think we have a chance to do this again too, right? To return to God, to return to the people of God, even if we're kind of separated uh, for this time of uh, of shelter in place. I think uh, one of the greatest realization, therefore, of Christian prayer is that humanity is loved by God, and we should be know it. We should know this in the church, especially. In the people of God, we should know that we and in, in all of the human community is loved by God. And in times of stress and dislocation, we can miss this, right? We can uh, be so overwhelmed with the things around us that we can miss the simple fact that God loves us. And so what we can do, uh, even tonight, um, especially as the Apostles' Creed comes up, we can place ourselves in the story of the saints, in the story of the people of God, placing ourselves in the communion of the saints, relying on this great cloud of witnesses all around us. I mean, look around on, on Facebook, and I, I mean, just today, some uh, a colleague of mine in, in Carolina uh, shared a, a, a mass being celebrated by this wonderful priest with this gorgeous voice, and it was really great, and it was really great to hear the prayers Uh, for my soul. Uh, And so we can do this together, even on Facebook, even now. Rely on the strength of the cloud of witnesses around us. The uh, The encouragement of our friends and our neighbors, our brothers and sisters in Christ, even those uh, in our workplaces as we try to get through all of this together, working at home, I hope. And of course, taking comfort in the words of Scripture, looking anew uh, for the gift of hope that is in the Bible. Again, locating ourselves, as Mary did in the unfolding story of God. This is, the COVID is not the end of what we meant or went to do on this planet. We are still meant to extend the boundaries of the kingdom of God. Later still, of course, in the story, uh, in the early part of Jesus' life, 12-year-old Jesus would annoy mom and dad by preaching in the temple. I've been about my father's work. What what do you mean you're looking for me? Where else would I be, Jesus said. Kind of sassed him a little bit, but that's okay. He's the Lord. And he does so without telling them, which is why they're upset, of course. But interestingly, when that story resolves at the end of the second chapter of Luke, we read that Mary kept these things in her heart. We don't read that Mary was upset. We don't read that Mary, uh, you know, 
berated Jesus. We don't really, we don't see that Mary and Joseph fought about, um, you know, that's your son making all the problems. No, we don't, we don't see any of that stuff. We see that Mary kept all these things in her heart. For us, let's keep Jesus working in us close to our hearts, close to everything that makes us who we are. Even if some of what he calls us to do is strange at times, and right now it might be very much so that we're uh, called to sequester and keep each other safe by being at home and as much as it's possible for us. He calls us in these strange times to keep his working close. So many of us have, by the way, already experienced God's hand at work, and some of the folks that I've talked to have uh, already just said, hey, this thing happened to me, isn't that amazing? And I'm like, yeah, that's really, really cool. These great little um, spiritual anecdotes, if you will, of God working very surely in people's lives. Keep these things close to our hearts, even if they seem kind of strange at first. Because as Mary did, she kept the work of Jesus close in her heart, even, I guess, as it kind of upset her in the beginning of his ministry. So I hope any of that is helpful. Uh, we look to Our Lady as uh, someone who kind of exemplifies uh, the greatest virtue of, of Christian character, someone who prays, serves, adores uh, Jesus. Uh, and today is the day that we remember uh, when, that she was, when, when Jesus was conceived uh, by the Holy Ghost. And so as we head into evening prayer, uh, I pray that you would um, stay present with us uh, and when we get to some silent time in there, do feel free to add your petitions if you're, uh, if you're comfortable with sharing them with the Facebook public uh, so that I can pray with you, obviously, but for, so that uh, your brothers and sisters in Christ can also pray for you as well. Very good. I will bless the Lord who giveth me counsel. My heart teacheth me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not fail. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much in the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant your absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing thy praises, O God, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thou art worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the world. The psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 110, verses one, or excuse me, verses one through seven, excuse me, one through five, and Psalm 132. Psalm 110, verses one through five. The Lord said to my Lord, "Sit at my right hand." until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord will send the scepter of your power out of Zion, saying, Rule over your enemies round about you. Princely state has been yours from the day of your birth. In the beauty of holiness have I begotten you, like dew from the womb of the morning. The Lord has sworn, and he will not recant. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord who is at your right hand will smite kings in the day of his wrath. He will rule over the nations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 132. Lord, remember David and all the hardships he endured, how he swore an oath to the Lord and vowed a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not come under the roof of my house, nor climb up into my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep, nor let my eyelids slumber, until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. The ark, we heard it was in Ephrata. We found it in the fields of Jiren. Let us go to God's dwelling place. Let us fall upon our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Let your faithful people sing with joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. In truth, he will not break it. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, Their children will sit upon your throne forever. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired her for his habitation. This shall be my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for I delight in her. I will surely bless her provisions and satisfy her poor with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her faithful people will rejoice and sing. There will I make the horn of David flourish. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. As for his enemies, I will clothe them with shame. But as for him, his crown, shine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, 
is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. With my whole heart I said, O God of my fathers and Lord of mercy, who has made all things by thy word, and by thy wisdom has formed man to have dominion over the creatures thou hast made, and rule the world in holiness and righteousness, and pronounce judgment in uprightness of soul. Give me the wisdom that sits by thy throne, and do not reject me from among thy servants. For I am thy slave, and the son of thy maidservant, a man who is weak and short-lived, with little understanding of judgment and laws. For even if one is perfect among the sons of men, yet without the wisdom that comes from thee, he will be regarded as nothing. Thou hast chosen me to be king of thy people, and to be judge over thy sons and daughters. Thou hast given command to build a temple on the holy mountain, and an altar in the city of thy habitation, a copy of the holy tent which thou didst prepare from the beginning. With thee is wisdom, who knows thy works and was present when thou didst make the world, and who understands what is pleasing in thy sight, and what is right according to thy commandments. Send her forth from the holy heavens, and from the throne of thy glory send her that she may be with me in toil, and that I may learn what is pleasing to thee, for she knows and understands all things, and she will guide me wisely in my actions and guard me with her glory. Then my works will be acceptable, and I shall judge thy people justly, and shall be worthy of the throne of my Father. Here endeth the reading. Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. We were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son, from the Father. Here endeth the reading. Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts so that we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, announced by an angel to the Virgin Mary, may by his cross and passion be brought into the glory of his resurrection, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us say together the first prayer for mission at the bottom of page 70. O God and Father of all, whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship thee, all nations obey thee, all tongues confess and bless thee, and men and women everywhere love thee and serve thee in peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now at this time, beloved, if you would uh, quiet your heart, offer your intercessions, thanksgivings, um, everything to God in prayer, uh, do, if you, uh, I do invite you to add those sins in the comment section below this video. Let us pray for the sick. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, 
We humbly beseech thee to behold, visit, and relieve thy sick servants for whom our prayers are desired. Look upon them with the eyes of thy mercy. Comfort them with a sense of thy goodness. Preserve them from the temptations of the enemy and give them patience under their affliction. In thy good time, restore them to health and enable them to lead the residue of their life in thy fear and to thy glory. And grant that finally they may dwell with thee in life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for doctors and nurses. Sanctify, O Lord, those whom you have called to the study and practice of the arts of healing and to the prevention of disease and pain. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit that by their ministries the health of the community may be promoted and your creation glorified. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray in this time of great sickness. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness we flee unto thee for succor. Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use of for their cure, and grant that, perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leadeth to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom it be in the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Thank you again for joining us tonight. Uh, we'll have uh, some more up for you uh, very soon, uh, probably tomorrow evening. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day uh, and hold each other tight and keep each other in your prayers. <laughs>